One station one 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 on a gas leak called Wrangler Road. Gas leak called the Wrangler Road. Dispatch clear. Dispatch one eleven call. I've lived in Langdon for about uh, four years now. So I moved from Calgary when we moved out here. Originally I grew up in a small town uh, in kind of central Alberta, uh, Bowdoin, less than a thousand people there. So, And then just moved to Calgary for work and ended up moving out here because we wanted to get back to a smaller community. One of the reasons we moved out here, uh, I was on the volunteer fire department in Bowdoin before I moved to Calgary. and so. We were looking at places to live, that was one of the things that I wanted to look for was uh, that they had a fire department that I could join and be a part of. I'm a automotive service manager for a reputable dealership in the city. Uh, you know, it, it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, and then when we moved out here, of course, we started our family. Um, and it just wasn't the right time with having the younger children. And I talked to the wife about it and I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, ah, just do it. So I applied and yeah. No, I, I really wish I'd done it sooner. I came home from work. Um, my wife had seen a posting on Facebook. She was still at home with our uh, second child, um, and she was looking on Facebook, and, and Station 111 had put out a call for people to come and volunteer, and she signed me up. I didn't really do it. The fire department had made a post uh, looking to see if anybody wanted to uh, you know, try and hire on as a recruit. So Sean expressed some interest in it. Uh, Sean's always been the type of guy to help out anyone. And so we sent a message on Facebook and the next thing you know, he had an interview and that went really well. And we haven't looked back since. He's really, he's done well with it. He, he enjoys it. And um, I think he's a good fit for that kind of work. Uh, my whole life I've wanted to be a firefighter really. Uh, when I was in high school I did the fire cadets program with Calgary, but uh, I've never forgotten about my like passion for firefighting and wanting to firefight. So uh, there's been a few times where they're recruiting in Langdon and I applied a couple times. The second time I actually got on was this last turnaround. So it's a dream come true to get hired on finally. Uh, yeah, I've been on a, I, I attend as many calls as I can. Um, I think that's, well, that's one of the reasons I got in this training this time around is because I'm attending, I'm at a decent amount of calls. As much as I can, I have two small kids at home and I work a day job, but any chance I have, I'm here. If those tones go off, I'm here. We'll be out running errands and if I get a call while I'm in the city, it, like, it ruins my whole day if I can't make it. So. 
I've been on the fire department now for, I think, just over eight years. Moved the family here and thought a small town life would be, would be the one. And uh, yeah, just kind of got here, stumbled across the, the fire department one day and thought it'd be cool to go out and help people. And so I went and talked to the station chief that was here, Ron, and um, kind of voiced my interest and started the process. Uh, I own a landscape construction company. I kind of have that freedom to be able to attend some calls during the day if we're working in the area, which is very helpful. Um, yeah, it's a you know it's mainly a summer stuff, uh, so in the winter I can spend a lot of time on the fire department. Yes, I do work in Calgary. So uh, firefighting, I gotta say, it hasn't really it impacts your job, or at least it's impacted my job minimally. Um, I've only missed work a couple of times because of early morning calls or late night calls that have kind of dug into my work day. So I've been late for work for whatever reason. So I work uh, tower construction. So I have many different foremen, like I move sites, I got a new boss. So every boss I've talked to, I've you know said, hey, just so you know, I'm a volunteer firefighter. There's a small chance that you might get a text from me early in the morning saying, hey, I'm going to be an hour late because of a call last night or whatever. So in my experience, uh, all the employers I have have been very supportive of it. I think they understand that it's uh, a great service to provide and the community needs volunteer firefighters, so they're okay with losing their employee for you know a short amount of time if, if it makes a difference. In the first place, yeah, the reason I wanted to be a firefighter, uh, well, first and foremost, is just because it's just such a good opportunity to give back to the community. Um, that kind of sounds cliche, but it's, you know, I really do enjoy helping people when I get an opportunity. Um, some of my parents brought me up doing, so uh, it's, that's, that's the first reason I wanted, because, you know, we, we help people on their worst days and uh, can make, I really think, the fire department makes a huge difference in their community. Give back to the community. I like to help people and th this is definitely a way to help people. Um, you know what, it's a lot more rewarding than I ever anticipated. Um, just the feeling you get when you actually help somebody or you save a structure from complete disaster, it's very rewarding. When I started, my goal was just to help. Um, I never thought I would I, I didn't even know if I would really like it, to tell you the truth. Um, and I just got involved because I wanted to help. Um, I, I, I didn't realize that you would even get paid per call when we started. I just, I've always, I've always really enjoyed being a helper. And I just, I feel like it's like, it's an important role and it's, it's nice. It's like a very fulfilling job. I feel like I'm doing something that's important. And it's not just, you know, it's not just making a paycheck to pay your bills. It's something that means something. And it fills me with a lot of pride to be able to be a part of this team and be one of the guys out there helping people. So since I've started doing this every chance, any community outreach things we do, I try and put my name in the hat to go do it. Uh, I enjoy being a part of the community. I love Langdon. It's a great little town. And I just, I just love being a more integral part of the community for sure. Uh, I became a firefighter because I've I've been doing this sort of thing in a way for my entire life. Uh, I love helping people. It's the reason I went into my original career. Um, when things changed in my life where I had the time, I decided now was the time to pick it up. And you know, being on a volunteer apartment in particular, I find incredibly gratifying. And at the end of the day, for me, it's it's trying to make a difference in in helping somebody who's, who's having a really bad day. Um, you know, so that's probably really why I'm here and, and what I like about it is I just want to help somebody who's having a bad day and sometimes we can't make it better, but we do our best. But the team of people here is really great and I think most people are here for the same reason. They want to help their community. You know, we live here, we serve here. Um, it just gives you a lot of pride to be able to work and in the community that you live and help people. And some days, people you know personally, uh, there's a lot of gratification that comes with that. It's, 
it's just an amazing opportunity. Uh, you get to do things that no one else gets to do. I mean, it's not very often that you get to, you know, cut cars apart and jump down ladders and do all this really exciting stuff that, you know, you wouldn't have an opportunity to do otherwise. There's the little kid aspect of it too. You want to drive big fire trucks. You want to, you know, you want to go kicking doors down and all that exciting stuff. Um, turns out it's not all that. Um, there's so much more to it than that. There's so much more community involvement, a brotherhood within the, you know, within the fire department, uh, camaraderie that's, you know, second to none. It's amazing the, the, the guys I've got to work with, the, the, the leaders that I've got to work under. Um, you know, the, right from the chief to captains, lieutenants, all these officers out there, they're just, it's, it's amazing. You know, you, yeah, they've developed a trust in me over the years, but I've equally trusted them. So when you, when you have trust going both ways, you, you can get a lot done properly and safely. Yeah, it's a great group of guys. It's, it's like amazing. You know, I've worked in a lot of welding shops throughout the years and stuff. And generally there's a small percentage that you get along with and that you know, you form close relationships with. And with my recruit, recruit class, there's nine of us. And like, I, I like, genuinely like every single person that's at this hall. It's, you can really feel the brotherhood that comes along with being a firefighter. And I, I genuinely care about all these guys a lot. So it's, it's, like having a, it's like having a second family and it's pretty amazing to be a part of. I don't think you can be a firefighter in this setting unless you have a whole lot of support at home. I've missed lots, lots of stuff with my family because of, of fire. And they say we're paid on call, but there'll be lots of weekends where, you know what, I have to volunteer to stay behind for free just so that there's people around, Christmas, holidays, that kind of stuff. Without support from your family, that's that's not possible. Oh hi, hi man. Oh. That's how we do it. We just book it. Wait a bit. Bye. <laughs> I guess it's like any other job. Um, when the tones go off, Sean goes to work. Um, when the tones don't go off, he's here at home with us. So it's it takes a little bit of getting used to in the beginning, but. Um, he's been doing it for so long that it just doesn't even phase us anymore. He's happy, so I'm happy. And so, and we're the type of people that, you know, we, we do like to help out. Um, we do like to be of assistance when somebody needs a hand. So it's nice to know that um, he's able to do that. We've got a wife and son and a daughter. They just, they know how, what it means to me to be able to go out and help people and, you know, how it kind of fills that void in my life of, of helping people. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Second to none being able to go out and actually make a difference in the world. I'm married. Uh, I have one child. She's 10. And uh, they've been a big support uh, for me through this. I truly do enjoy doing what I'm doing here. So I spend a lot of time here and my family's been very supportive of that. Very fortunate that they do because you never know when you're going to get called for calls. It could be middle of the day, the middle of the night, and sometimes in the middle of dinner and things like that. So uh, having a supportive family is a huge benefit for sure. Uh, got a wife and three kids. Um, my oldest is four, my middle one's two, and my youngest is actually turned seven months yesterday. So she's she's got some mixed feelings about it for sure. Yeah, because I'm a single mom, I have most of the responsibilities already, but like a few times I've been bathing one of the kids and then he'll get a fire call, so he'll have to come upstairs and hand me whichever kid he has and then he'll yeah. run out the door. I feel bad about that a lot of times. Um, you know, it's, it's t tough on her. She sacrifices uh, to let me be on the fire department. The worst about the fire department is that he's on call. Like, so that's kind of difficult because we never can't, I feel like sometimes we can't really plan anything because we could be doing something and he'd have to go. Um, I wouldn't be able to be on the fire department if she wasn't able to do as much as she does with the kids. My, my, my wife and, and my kids are, are all very supportive. Uh, we've never really had 
any issues if I have to stay behind. Um, we make up for that other times. The fire department is, is good. They understand that you have a family and a life outside of the fire department. So they do, you know, right when I joined, they said like, you know, there's, we need a big commitment, but at the same time, we understand that you have stuff outside the fire department. So if you need to take care of stuff, that's fine. There's very few occasions that <laughs> I'll shut my radio off at home. Um, I just, you know, anything big, like obviously son's birthday parties, um, stuff like that, I will be off duty for the entire day. But for the most part, I feel if I'm at home, I can get to the hall, I can do something. I, I want to do it. Um, so. Yeah, there's been those there's been those times where my wife's asked me like, "Oh, do you mind you shut off your radio then?" And I go, "Well, what if something happens? What if what if they need me?" Like never never technically having a day off really is hard sometimes because you're you're always on call. So even if you just, you don't, like, even if I have the week, a week off from my day job, it's, it's not just complete freedom because I know at any second I could get a call and I'd be, I'd be gone. I have to, I still have responsibilities even in my downtime. Address the way I act and stuff too. I've, I was, I've always been a, a, a good person, I feel, but being a firefighter in a small community, I feel like, you know, the, people are aware of that and the spotlight is always on you. So I've just, you know, I, I drive better than I used to, and I'm, I'm always aware that I'm a firefighter. So in any situation in life, I'm just trying to handle it the most professional and best way I can. You know, I think the one thing that I uh, am just very proud about being here, like, you know, I've, I've only, this station's been in, in existence for almost 30 years now. We get along really well together. We work well together. We have guys with 10 plus years, 20 plus years of experience on the department. It's, and they're still learning. Um, it's the amount of knowledge uh, to gain in the fire service is endless. Um, so at four years, I'm basically, I know nothing still. I have my course, but my course is. Um, but yes, I would, I'm a long way from, from being anything more than just a firefighter. That training comes from guys who have been volunteers for a long time and they step up and put on the training courses for, for the guys that want to learn. And it's a huge commitment that the 1001 course that's currently going on, um, Matt and Kevin, uh, the station chief, they've spent hours and hours and hours of their own time hoping to prepare the guys that are coming up to take their 1001s. It's a huge commitment, a huge commitment. Without guys like that, volunteer halls don't exist. I, I love helping out. Um, I didn't get to this point in my career without someone helping me. So I see it as someone, someone helped me get to where I am. I need to help someone else get to where they need to be. You know, when you start to get into um, Getting certified as a firefighter, you're, you know, you're here every other weekend for months on end. Um, a lot of familiarization with the trucks, uh, learning the trucks, where things are kept in them, um, and then you know you you do all that training and you get your stuff, and then you don't do anything for a bit, and then all of a sudden you're training for, you know, you're at a weekend course for grass fire or heavy rescue or medical stuff, um, you know, and then you get a little lull and then it's back again. So. Um, it can be, it can be a lot. Best thing of <laughs> firefighting? Well, I was trying to think of a better answer other than, you know, driving fire trucks and, you know, getting to put out fires. Um, you know, I guess I never grew out of that from being a kid when you just want to be a fireman, and, you know, play with sirens and um, that's honestly one of the best parts of being a firefighter. Uh, the training's great. Um, being able to go through a building filled with smoke as part of your 1001 course. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's exciting. It's gives you an adrenaline rush. It's yeah. 
everything. Just the experience alone is just, it's, it's fun. Uh, for me, I mean, certainly the, the excitement of a call is a big driver. There's something about when the tones go off and we know we're going to, uh, say, a structure fire or a motor vehicle accident. There's a certain excitement involved there. It really gets the adrenaline pumping. That's a hard one. There's, there's lots of good things about being a firefighter. Um, we do tons of stuff within the community. I have all the time in the world for little people. Um, I enjoy going to the schools. I enjoy having uh, the, the girl guides and, and the scouts. Uh, there's a little girl that, oh, it was probably seven years ago and their car rolled on Trans-Canada. And to this day, she remembers me. That's a good thing. I think, like I said, the camaraderie, the, the brotherhood that it is, uh, you know, coming to this hall, you get a bunch of guys, there's an emergency, you know, everybody's kind of hearts racing a little bit. Um, we all respect one another in our positions. We go out, we, we save a life, we save a structure, we save a roadway, we do this, we do that. Um, whatever's called upon us, we come back, we talk about it. Uh, same thing, the brotherhood's there again, and then we go home. So it's just kind of a neat, a neat culture. I like the culture. The worst part I found about being a firefighter is never really finding out the outcome. So you, you go to these uh, medical calls, you go to um, vehicle extrications, you go to fires, and we do our job, and people get loaded into an ambulance and taken away, and we never really know what happened after that. That's the worst part, I think. I really enjoy a lot all aspects of this. I enjoy the training, I enjoy the camaraderie. Um, you know, you, you definitely, there's some tough calls you go on, you know, you see things that most people probably don't see in their lives and uh, that's a bit of an eye opener. Well, so honestly, for me, the worst thing about being a firefighter is seeing people on their worst days. I am pretty good at detaching myself from that sort of stuff because you wouldn't be able to do this job if you were to dwell on every call but it's it's we still sympathize it's it's terrible when people are calling 911 it's usually because they're having one of the worst days of their lives and so we we see those people all the time it's it you know it just is it's just not a good situation to be in uh, even though we're there to help and it feels good to help them through that um, still you kind of wish you just never it, that you wouldn't want you just wish they never had to call you um, seeing some of the, like, the medical stuff. It could be chest pains, could be difficulty breathing, uh, could be a hemorrhage, could be really anything. Someone's got to be there to try and help, and that's, that's why we're here. I, I miss certain things with my kids and stuff sometimes, just because I'm out on a fire call. But my, my whole family is super supportive, and they, they understand what it takes to do this job and stuff, so. It's not that bad.